This took place around the spring of 2017 when I was a sophomore in high school. I was 16 years old at the time and was definitely no popular kid. The people who attended my school were your usual obnoxious douchebags without a care in the world. These were the types of kids who always got into trouble for the dumbest things. Whether it be food fights, vaping in the bathrooms, or even pulling pranks, it would always be chaos. The only so-called friend I did have was a girl in my history class who I partnered with for assignments. Other than that, I was a complete loner. One day during lunch, I'm sitting down eating my meal when a guy I had never seen before sits next to me. He wore navy blue jeans, a white shirt, and seemed friendly enough. He introduced himself as Julian and how he was new to the school. He explained that he was a foreign exchange student from Romania and immediately tells me that I was beautiful. Okay, weird approach, but I brushed it off thinking that it was something people do in Romania. I tell him thank you very much and continue to eat my lunch. He attempts to ask me questions and even though his accent was really strong, I still tried to answer them as best I could. Pretty soon the conversation started to die down and I tell him that I'm late for class and that it was nice meeting him. He seemed to understand and walks away as I go to my fourth period. Fast forward till the end of the day. I'm getting out of school to go home when I see Julian standing by the pickup lane. He eventually spots me and starts walking over to me. I thought nothing of it and just thought he wanted to make friends, not to mention I didn't have any either. We start talking about school and why he moved to the US and the usual small talk you'd make when you meet someone new. After what seemed like an hour of talking, he then unexpectedly steals a kiss from me. I give him an uncomfortable look and he apologizes saying that he always did that in Romania and how people were okay with it. Eventually, my mom's car pulls up and I tell him I have to go and to never do that again. While he seemed like a nice guy, there was definitely something creepy about him. Do you ever get that strange vibe from someone that you can't quite comprehend? Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. That night, around 9, I was cleaning up from dinner when I get a text from an unknown number. When I open it, I instantly got chills when I saw who it was. It was Julian, asking me how I was and what I was up to. I have no idea how he got my number and I don't want to know. I simply blocked him and got ready for bed as I had to wake up early. However, it didn't end there. Around 1am I wake up from another text, this time from a different number. I read it and it's Julian coming at me with a different approach than before. His only words were, Why did you block me? Below the text was an image of a house that looked awfully familiar that I couldn't quite put my finger on. At this point, I'm still tired and rubbing my eyes when it finally hit me. The house he had sent was my house. I run to the window, open my curtains, and I see someone standing in the street looking up at me. It was too dark to see just who this someone was, but I was 99% sure it was Julian. I run over to my parents' room and tell them the whole story and even showed them the text. When they knew I wasn't lying, my dad called the police and I tried my best to give a description of him. My parents pulled me out of school for a few days and even got an alarm system for security. I returned to school a week later where I learned a shocking truth. 
I was in my fifth period and we were doing an assignment when the principal walked in asking for my name. He tells me to pack my things and bring them with me. As we're walking down the hall, I ask him if I'm in trouble, to which he then gave no response to. We reach the main office and he leads me into the conference room where I was greeted by two police officers. They tell me to have a seat and immediately ask about Julian. I felt a chill run down my spine as they said this and told them what I knew. They refused to reveal any information about how they knew about this, but thanked me for my time and that I could go back to class. I later found out from my principal that Julian was never actually a student. He was a 25-year-old male and had been sneaking in and out of the school pretending to be a student. They still don't know how he managed to get past security, but needless to say, he was never caught. He had also done this to other students as well, but never actually showed up to their house. Why I was targeted and why I was chosen will forever stay with me. I'm now in college out of state and I hope I never see that Julian guy again. It was the summer of 2016 and I was going into the 12th grade. The girl I had been dating had moved over 2,000 miles away from our town and I wasn't doing well because of it. Needless to say, I was devastated for a good month before I even felt the slightest bit of relief. During this time, I sort of became withdrawn, spent less time around friends, gave the cold shoulder to my family, and mainly turned to the internet. The internet was basically my go-to place for when I was feeling down. I mainly stuck to playing games and creating content for my YouTube channel. I won't mention the name or subscriber count, I mean, I'm not getting paid for advertisement. It wasn't until the middle of summer where I met a girl on a dating site at the time. She claimed to be the same age as me lived in the next town over, and while she wasn't a 10 out of 10, she wasn't ugly. Her name was Amy, and we developed a really strong connection right off the bat. I could talk about things with her I wouldn't be able to talk about with any of my other friends. We shared similar interests and had the same ongoing bullshit family issues. We chatted through the app for a good few weeks and even told her about my YouTube channel. She seemed impressed by it and we even had our weekly date nights by watching movies she streamed on Discord. She even introduced me to some of her friends at her school over Discord and ended up adding each other on Instagram. After that, summer ended and school let back in. It wasn't until a few weeks later where Amy had asked to meet me in person. I was hesitant at first and asked if we could do a video call, but she insisted that we meet up. Declining a video call kind of set up a little bit of a red flag for me, but not a deal breaker. I reluctantly agreed and she recommended a public park that wasn't too far away from my house. I didn't own a car back then, so I got on my bike and rode to the park with my GPS. When I got there, the park was completely dead with the exception of a single car parked in the lot. I texted Amy telling her that I was here and she immediately responded saying that she was here as well. I asked if that was her in the car and she had said yes and to come towards it. I respond with an okay and look up at the parked car. A small light from inside the car from what I assumed was a phone screen lit up, revealing several people inside including the driver. From what I saw, I could make out the face of a woman and I instantly knew right then that it had to be Amy. However, 
Even though I saw her face for a second, she looked nothing like her pictures. Whoever was in the car looked to be in their 50s and at that point I knew what was going on. Suddenly the passenger window opens and I hear two gunshots fly out of a gun barrel. The car sped off out of the parking lot and I rode home as fast as I could. I thankfully wasn't followed but I called the police and explained my situation. When I tried giving them the Discord and website profile, the page had already been taken down. Other than that, there was nothing more they could do. Two nights later, I woke up to hear a car engine outside my driveway and saw it was the same car from the park. As soon as I spotted it, however, it drove off and I never saw it again. Just a disclaimer that there is a police sketch in this story that some viewers may find upsetting or disturbing. When I was about 13, I lived with my aunt and uncle for a week as my parents were on their honeymoon in the Bahamas. My aunt and uncle were both very quiet people. In other words, they weren't the type to engage with me or talk with me unless I had asked them to. Overall, they sort of just let me do my own thing. Anyway, I was staying at their house for about a week until my parents had come back and while it wasn't the best place to stay, it wasn't boring. They had a pool, a basketball hoop, and all of the other things to keep a 13 year old occupied. I'd say maybe my second night there, I started to hear strange noises coming from the backyard while I slept. I brush it off, thinking it was the family of deer that came out every so often. They would come from the woods and eat my relatives' vegetables from their garden and would take off if they were spotted. Needless to say, my aunt and uncle were not a fan of them. Being stupid, I decided to be ballsy and attempt to scare them off with my air horn. I head to the window with my finger on the horn, but immediately see that it was anything but deer. Standing beside the pole was a woman I had never seen before looking up at me with this blank expression, as if she were doing something mundane, like taking out the trash or raking leaves. I'm not sure what it was, but there was something about this woman that made me feel extremely uneasy. To be honest, she kind of resembled the uncanny valley phenomenon. I couldn't tell what it was about this woman that scared me, but I almost threw up by looking at her. After about a good minute of us staring at each other, she then runs towards the woods in the most strangest way. I woke up my aunt and uncle and they instantly believed me as they apparently saw this woman before. Turns out, she had been stalking them for a few weeks now and they never managed to catch her. While she was never seen again, the county sheriff's office was able to conduct a police sketch of what the woman apparently looked like with other reports. 